Welcome back. So now that we have our service up and running, let's try and do the actual implementation of that service. And just to kind of have a clear place to put my implementations, I'm going to add a new folder right here. And I'm just going to call it services. You could also call it implementations or whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it services. And in that one, I'm going to add a new class. And that class is going to be called customer service. So this is the actual implementation of our I customer service. There we go. I'm going to create this class and then the first thing I'll do right here is I'm going to do the I customer service just to kind of use that interface. So colon and then the name of the interface that I want this class to represent and then a command dot to kind of explain that I want to implement the entire interface right here. So I'm just going to move things around a little bit because I want create, read, update, delete, just like we have in the other classes. So we have create right here. Then we have read, the first read and a second read. Then we have the update and then we have the delete. And the final thing we have is this new customer right here. I'm just going to move that all the way to the top right below the actual constructor. So there we go. Now we have the implementation and we're going to start adding the different functions in the next couple of lessons. Before we do that, we're going to try something now. We're going to use our first dependency injection. Now, dependency injection works by actually in the constructor. What we're going to do is we're going to use constructor dependency injection. And we do that by saying we need a repository right here. Now, notice if I go back to my printer right here and I scroll up, what I've done is I've actually gone in and created a new repository right here in the start, right? But instead of doing that, I want to be able to kind of dependency inject or send that in so that I can avoid writing new anywhere in my code. Now this gives me a possibility of later on providing different types of repositories if I want to, and we'll look into that later. But for now, just accept that what we're going to do is we're going to dependency inject the repository because we need it to work with our customer and store the data inside a data source later. So I'll do a new i repository, i customer repository right here, customer repository. I just do a command dot and I'll use the domain service for that one. And I'll make it just customer repository right here. Okay. And then I'll do a private, I'll just store this inside a private variable. I'll just call it customer repo just to make a different name. And notice the underscore in front right here is because it's going to be a private variable inside the class. And that's going to be equal to customer repository right here. There we go. And now I'm going to let um, the IDE take care of actually creating this property for me by command clicking and creating field right here. There we go. And there we go. Now we have a private field. And we don't even have to put in private because as default, if you don't put in anything, this guy will be private. Another thing I do is I can actually make it read only because this is never going to change, right? So, oh, I need to put it in front, of course, there we go. So this is actually a very private repository right here that's never going to change in the lifetime of this service. Just meaning that whenever I've created a new service, this guy is not going to be changed. Sweet, so that's what we need to do. Now, now we are just going to accept that there's now a repository available and we don't have to create a new repository anywhere in our code. This is the power of dependency injection and you'll, be, you'll love it when you start working with this. So just, just give it a chance, man. You'll love it. Trust me, you'll love it. But let's end the video here and then we'll start building this step by step. See you in the next time. Have fun.